What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Steelers Breakdown Podcast. Nick Farabaugh here, and folks, the week is here. We are here. It is training camp week. Indeed. And that means the Steelers report on Wednesday. The first practice is on Thursday. It's open to the public all week. Maybe we'll see some of y'all out of there. But I'm going to keep talking about training camp this week. We're going to do previews for different types of, of things, like position battles, for example, was Friday today. I want to highlight three different types of players. One, the established guys that you probably know that I'm looking forward to seeing another step from. Second, the guys with something to prove to me, you know, something that they need to prove. And third, the sleepers. I want to start with the established guys because I want to talk about two specific names here. One offense, one defense. Offensively, I really want to talk about George Pickens. Man, George Pickens is a guy that I don't think people realize has probably another level to go. And I mean that. Like, this guy has another level to reach in his game. You know, he's a good player right now, but his route running can take another leap. He's a guy that wins vertically, has pretty good game off the line. You saw him, you know, win more on slants last year, win more on stuff like digs. But if he could start to win more on, you know, comebacks and curls and other different routes uh, in the deep route tree, this is the guy that can go from star to superstar. He's already a really good player. But you look at what he's been working on and, and what he told us he was working on, kind of the twitchiness in and out of breaks, you know, getting rid of redundant foot footwork stuff. Um, you know, taking that extra step that really allows guys to stay in his hip pocket. Man, if he can eliminate stuff like that and become a three-level threat for this team, I think people still really underrate how dangerous he is after the catch. So if he can do that, this year he could be a legitimate number one. I still think, you know, there's questions out there from people, legitimate questions out there of if he can still if he, if he can be that one, you know, if he can be the number one in an NFL offense. And I think he's on that borderline one two right now. He takes that leap. I think he can really become that legit one. So you need to keep an eye on this guy because if what is legit is true, I think he can take that next step up. I really do. You know, route running is going to be so huge for him. He's got great hands. Uh, he He's obviously got great physical gifts. Uh, body control is insane. And, and so if he can take that next little step up to become a three-level threat as a route runner, I think the, the sky's the limit for George Pickens. The sky's the limit also for Keanu Benton. He's the other guy in this category that I really want to talk about because I think Keanu Benton is the next star defender for the Steelers. I'm throwing that out there right now. Now, last year, if you look at the stat sheet, it doesn't jump out. Two sacks. But you watch the tape. He he needs to finish more. I think that's a big part. You know, that can be just as easy as as making the tackle. That can be just as easy as you know rounding the arc a little bit more. And even if you are a defensive tackle, you still have to have some flexibility around that arc because you know good quarterbacks do move in the pocket very well. You saw like Geno Smith, for example, that game, uh, he was in the backfield a ton, and Geno Smith really uh, dialed it up on him, just stepping up in the pocket and ran right around him a few times. So he needs to get better at finishing, but he has everything to be a dominant pass rusher. Uh, he's already, uh, you know, I think as a run defender, I think things slowed down for him a little bit last year. Uh, that was what he was asked to do at Wisconsin. He was asked to two-gap and kind of stay there, not not do as much, you know, pin your ears back and go, but the Steelers let him pin his ears back and go. You know, he's got a great club swim. He's got a great chop rip. He's got you know, his cross chop move that is great. Uh, he's got a bull rush that is legit, and he's built like, a, you know, an ideal defensive lineman. If you were building a guy that could be a three-tech, you know, into a zero you know, that's what he would look like, man. State champion wrestler, uh, has great leverage that he plays with. Keanu Benton has the great, this great profile of a defensive lineman that can be really good. He's got that burst. He's He's got, you know, this incredible functional core strength where he just doesn't move. Uh, they just, You just can't really move the guy. And so his, this is, I think, going to be a really big year for Keanu Benton. I think he's going to have a great year. It's just taking that next step. I'm really excited to see him in one-on-ones this year against Sayamalo, Daniels, Frazier, different guys like that. I think he has the potential to be the next breakout guy. His body's in better shape. He looks better. You know, he's got that full year of NFL training under him. I think he's really primed to have a huge season this year. So look out for Keanu Bet. The next category I kind of want to tackle is, you know, the where can 
these guys prove it. Guys that need to prove, you know, guys that have been around and, and you know, maybe just have something to prove. A wide receiver to me, it's Calvin Austin the third. You know, we're talking a lot about wide receiver, and that's just such a big area of, of focus on this offense because, you know, Deontay Johnson's gone, the IU stuff. So guys like Calvin Austin, when you look at him with his speed, his athleticism, his quickness, you look at that guy and you want to see him succeed because he has special gifts. Even if he's a smaller player, this is a guy, man, that has special speed. In and out of his breaks, his explosiveness and quickness are quite honestly bonkers at times. And so this spring, he had a phenomenal, phenomenal spring. You know, last year he, he told me he thinks he was getting in his head a little bit. And what that caused him to do was take – too many steps focus more on the DB rather than just using his speed and natural quickness and natural explosiveness. His ability to run routes has always been there. You look at the Memphis tape against sauce Gardner, for example, he was cooking him. He was cooking him. He can win at all three levels. It, it, but when you get to the NFL, you know, these DBs are savvier and they're going to focus in on their tendencies. And, and Calvin Austin feels like that was happening a little bit. Uh, you know, footwork became extraneous. Uh, he took too many steps. Uh, so when you're quick speeded is speed and efficiency is so important in route running if you want to separate. Calvin Austin's a good deep route. He's also a guy that can catch screens and take you to the house on any play. But here's the thing with Calvin Austin. You always need to be a three-level threat when you're a guy that lives off deep speed like that. And the reason is you have to give these DBs something to worry about underneath. They'll play off him because they know the deep stuff's coming. But if you can, you know, threaten a curl route, if you can threaten a dig, if you can threaten a comeback, if you can threaten anything like that, that's when you really take your game to the next level as a guy even that small where you're playing outside in the slot. So that's really where he needs to take that next step. So I want to see that continue. We had a great spring, but I want to see it in training camp. I want to see it in the preseason. Then I want to see it translate to the regular season. I think he could have a really, really big role. You know, I liken him to Khalif Raymond in, in these Art Smith offenses, guys that get, you know, three, four targets a game, you know, deep threats. To really become that great deep threat, that guy to really be reckoned with, you have to have a threat underneath, you know, run those overs, different things like that. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Defensively, I'm looking for Darius Rush. That's the easy answer for me. You know, Corey Trice, I think, is a fair answer here, too, of guys that you want something to prove. But he's coming off an ACL tear. You know, he's I think he's going to be a full go, but you also know he's probably not going to be truly 100. Uh, you know, when when corners tear their ACLs like that and maybe have to wear a brace, it definitely hurts their fluidity. I mean, Trace, his whole senior year at, at Purdue wore one of those braces, and he wasn't the same level of fluid he was last year. Um, but you look at Darius Rush. This is a guy that came out of South Carolina just gifted in terms of physical traits, the height, the speed, the length. Ball skills are there because he's a former wide receiver. So he has great skills and athleticism, but the technique is very raw. Switching over from wide receiver, he's very new to the position even still. But what what level of advancement can you can you see? You know, does are, are his eyes getting better? Um, I think that's something to look. Is he getting better, you know, at zone coverage? I think his eyes and that go to better. Because if, if you, that can happen, then he can really adapt, you know, that dimebacker role while Cam Sutton's out. But he played against Tennessee last year. So he's a guy that could be a really versatile chess piece for them, really good depth on the back end. It's just going to be how does he adapt to this. And so I'm really excited to see what he can do. I thought, you know, he finished the spring very strong. So this is going to be a big, 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 big training camp for Darius Rush. I think he could be the main backup heading into week one if he showcases what I think he can – which is that level of consistency with his technique on a down-to-down, play-to-play basis. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what Darius Rush can do. Now I want to do two sleepers. I wrote an article over the weekend, five sleepers to watch. I want to highlight two of them today. The first one I want to highlight is Dylan Cook. I feel like people are forgetting about Dylan Cook in this offensive line room. You know, we talk about guys like Troy Falatano, Zach Frazier, Mason McCormick as young guys. Man, Dylan Cook is very similar in that vein. He had a great summer last year, really was on nobody's radar. But you look at the background, you know, former quarterback uh, at Montana State. Uh, he's a guy that is really big, has great feet. Man, he is super fluid. Uh, he gets to his spot very easily. His hand usage was a little rough last year. I thought his hands could get wide, he'd get a little grabby. But you really looked at what he did over the course of training camp, just improving. 
And then, you know, I've watched him over practice, and I think he's just improved. He plays four different spots. He can play both tackle spots and both guard spots, so anything but center. And so this is a guy that has a lot of upside potential. And I think if he can have another summer similar to what he did last year, maybe, you know, obviously better because you would hope he would get better with the year. I think he's going to be ready to adopt the swing tackle. And so I think, you know, this could have reverberation effects. Say, you know, Troy Faltano beats out Dan Moore. This certainly could make Dan Moore expendable. I think, you know, a Dan Moore trade at that point becomes something uh, more likely because I think Dylan Cook is a guy that they really like and has some upside to him. I think he makes this roster. I really like Dylan Cook as a player. I'm excited to see what he can do in Arthur Smith's scheme, get out in wide zone. I think it's really good uh, for him because he he's a guy, you know, soft-smoking, almost like a teddy bear off the field. Uh, but he is a guy that certainly in the run game gets out in space very well and can get those reach blocks and outside zone. I think he can really, really, really fit this offense well. So I'm excited to see what he can do. I think his kind of progress is going to have big implications on what ends up happening to those final roster spots at the bottom. And then the other guy I want to talk about on defense, you know, Jeremiah Moon. We don't talk a lot about the outside linebackers because you have the top three. It's Watt, Highsmith, Herbig. But Marcus Golden's not back. So someone has to fill the fourth role. And there's a few names in there. There's Kyron Johnson. There's David Prowse. There's Julius Welshoff. There's a few different names that you can throw in there. But Jeremiah Moon is the most intriguing. Uh, you know, at the end of last year, they ended up claiming him off waivers from Baltimore. And you could see why. I mean, you don't. it takes you five minutes to see why you would claim Jeremiah Moon. For one, he's very versatile in special teams. We know the Steelers have really focused on special teams this year. You bring back Miles Killebrew, you sign Tyler Matakevich, you do all these different things. You're focusing on that very, very big, you know, he signed Cordero Patterson, the new kickoff rules. I get it. So Jeremiah Moon is part of that too. You know, he's a guy that has great speed. He's a height weight speed guy. Uh, he's got phenomenal explosiveness. His physical gifts are very rare. You don't find guys with these physical gifts. Great length. He has He has kind of it all. It's going to be, you know, how does he fit in the technique part of that? You know, what moves does he have on a consistency basis? Is he a viable third guy? If one of Water Highsmith or Herbie gets down, could Moon be a guy that can give you spurts of pass rush ability? And, you know, he flashed that at times with Baltimore. But his explosiveness, his quickness, his ability to bend, he honestly is not super tight. He can get around that edge. Uh, he's got more flexibility in his ankles than I think people would give him credit for. So I'm interested to see what Jeremiah Moon does. I think he's probably my favorite right now to win that outside linebacker four job. I'm interested to see what he can do. Um, you know, claiming him off waiver is really a, a lottery ticket, to be quite honest with you, with those types of, of, of physical tools. So we'll see what he can end up doing. All right, folks, that's all for today's episode of Steelers Breakdown. Make sure if you are on YouTube watching us, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell if you are listening to this on another platform. Make sure to leave a review. Folks, it's 150 subscribers already on the YouTube channel since we started this last Tuesday. I can't thank you all enough. Thanks for all the support. We'll be back every day at training camp, bringing you more coverage here on Penn Line. Thanks for listening, everybody.